If you want to learn how to make your own super loud firecrackers at home, you found the right video. Stay tuned. First things first, even though we are not dealing with high explosives in this project, it is still a pretty dangerous endeavor. This is only a project for responsible individuals. In the United States, firecrackers manufactured for sale are limited to 0.05 grams of flash powder. Because of this, three things should be done. One, we are not going to use real flash powder, but a mock flash powder. Secondly, we are going to use the exact legal limit of 0.05 grams. And third of all, these are never to be made for sale. Of course, you could always opt to just make firecrackers made with black powder, which I showed how to do in this video, linked above. First, while making the fuel powder, be sure to wear a respirator. It is not worth getting in your lungs. I'm using an anode here, but you could use a fire starter as well, or any other source of the metal. I'm using 320 grit sandpaper to turn it into dust. As I mentioned before, this is not true flash powder, which is made from potassium perchlorate and aluminum powder and is highly regulated. This is a mock flash powder, or a slow flash booster. It's much more akin to those flash powders which were used in old-fashioned photography than what is used in fireworks today. In this photo, you can see the consistency of the dust you're looking for. Proportions should be made by mass. In this case, I'm using a beam balance, but a digital scale can be used as well. Even though this is not true flash powder, it still needs to be handled with care and not mixed up in large quantities. That said, I am not going to explicitly define the proportions of the powder. If you cannot ascertain that from the information presented, then you are likely not intelligent enough to safely undertake this project in the first place. Sulfur is not a necessary ingredient, but it does make the powder perform better. Here I'm using lab grade. Be careful not to get the sulfur everywhere when measuring it out. It's really a stubborn odor to get rid of. The main thing that sets this powder aside from the real flash powders is that the oxidizer is potassium nitrate rather than potassium chlorate or potassium perchlorate. Here I'm using recrystallized potassium nitrate for the utmost impurity. I'm busting up the crystals in a mortar and pestle. And since the crystals are hydroscopic, I will hit them with a heat gun. In this case, a hair dryer. The nitrate should be pulverized until it looks like confectionery sugar and you cannot feel any granules in between your fingers. You can see I have that attachment on the hair dryer to stop it from blowing the crystals right out of the mortar and pestle. I have it set on high heat to drive the moisture out of these hydroscopic crystals. Keep in mind that this is only to be done with unmixed oxidizer and not with any of the other ingredients mixed in. I let the hair dryer do its work for several minutes, not all of it is on camera. It is beneficial over the course of the drying process to agitate the powder so that not just the top layer gets the heat. You can see that due to the different densities of the powders, mixing by volume could be misleading. Even though just a tiny amount of powder is made at a time, it is important to use proper practice. This is called the diaper method. The powder at this point is potentially impact, friction, and even static sensitive. And even if it is not, it ought to be treated as such. Even though it is such a small amount of powder and cannot cause serious injury, proper conduct should be observed at all times, regardless of what the risk is. Fireworks as a hobby has an unnecessarily bad reputation. In every case of injury, one or more safety violations has been committed. Don't number yourself among them. Continue mixing the powder with the diaper method until it looks something like this. When making firecrackers, only proven reliable fuse should be used. I've experienced store-bought firecrackers having used poor fuse, and it caused serious hearing damage on the part of the user, no fault of his own. Luckily, it was just a small firecracker and not anything substantial, but the point still stands. Quality fuse should be used in every case. It is inexcusable for the producers to be doing this. Whenever working with open powder, it is beneficial to treat it as if it is going to go off at any time. As such, it is treated with due respect, and safety is at the forefront of concern. 
Here you can see just how small of an amount of powder should be used in these firecrackers. That's a tube of a straw with hot glue plugging the bottom, and you can see how we're going to insert the fuse here. When using the hot glue, make sure that it is unplugged. You do not want the heating element to cause sparks to set off the firecracker. Insert the fuse into the powder, and then squirt a little glue around. The heat of the glue is not enough to set off the powder, but the sparks from the element could. And then just wipe off any excess glue. These can actually be used as such, but it's beneficial to wrap a couple layers of tape around them to confine the powder better. In fact, these homemade firecrackers with even just a minuscule amount of that mock flash powder can perform louder than consumer firecrackers. This is the case even using an inferior mock flash powder. Proper materials and build quality trumps just a few wraps of paper. You can see this one with a very tiny amount of powder in it. This one with just a little bit more. And finally this last one with the full 50 milligrams. The only thing left to do is dress these up with tape and set them off. They are set off in order of increasing powder charge. Well, you can decide for yourself how you think they compare to the commercially available firecrackers. I believe they would perform superiorly if real flash powder were used. In any case, I appreciate you watching to the end, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.